Ten years after the fall of mankind, a man, his Kodiak Defense WK 180C Gen 2, and his beloved German Shepherd trekked through the remnants of the wasteland. Guy, guys, where's the dog? Th there's no footage of the dog. What? He what? He ate the dog in the first week? Jesus. God. Uh, let's let's start that again. This time, this time without the dog. <clears throat> Ten years after the fall of mankind, a man, his Kodiak Defense WK-180C Gen 2, and his Mira gas mask trekked through the remnants of the wasteland. This is their story. And welcome back to Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews. Today, we're going to be reviewing the Kodiak Defense WK 180C Gen 2. I'm pretty cool, but I need a fresh mag. WK 180C Gen 2. So why choose the WK 180C Gen 2? So while the WK-180C Gen 1 is Canada's blue-collar, hard-working man's modern sporting rifle, the Gen 2 is its sexier brother with a non-reciprocating bolt handle. So this rifle retails about $1,500 Canadian. It is a non-restricted AR-180B variant. This is not an AR-15 variant. It takes AR-15 magazines, it's chambered in 223 or, well, 556. It has a non-reciprocating charging handle, it has a super narrow, sleek design. It has an external bolt catch and release. It has captive takedown pinch, which is pretty awesome So when you need to take it apart. So Kodiak Defense is actually like the first company in Canada to manufacture um, AR-180 type rifles for the commercial non-restricted market. And that was about five years ago with the Gen 1. And just in March of 2022, they introduced the WK-180C Gen 2 to address the modifications that the public wanted to the Gen 1. And they came out with this rifle. And it is gorgeous. So how reliable is this rifle? This rifle has about 750 rounds through it, and that's not including the accuracy testing we've done. So in the first, so we did have two little issues. In the first 20 rounds, we had about three uh, failures to feed with Barnall ammunition, so steel case. 50 round mark, our gas screw worked itself loose and the rifle refused to cycle. And actually, it's, it's a really, really simple thing. You just remove the screw. What I recommend is put a dab of blue Loctite, put it back in there. I put mine to 40 inch pounds. I'm not exactly sure what you're supposed to tighten it at. It's getting hot. <laughs> but for the 700 rounds since, I have had like no issues. I've actually had one failure to feed. There was no other issues from there on. So a very, very reliable rifle. Ooh, that barrel's getting hot. Show to wear gloves. Also, in this review, we were using the Magpul Gen 2s and the Gen 3s. We were using the Lancer L5 AWMs. And actually, primarily, we were using the Cross Industries Cross Mags. So if you don't already know what these are, these are pistol mags, which I'm just going to show you on this one. You can fit 10 rounds per side. Why? Because these are pistol AR-15 mags. So 10 rounds, 10 rounds couple them together, they clip into place, and man, they, they don't remove unless you really give it some effort to, to unclip them. So, very robust. Now this is the Gen 1s. So they did replace the Gen 1s with the Gen 2s recently, and I have a, about six of the Gen 2s, and I have about four of the Gen 1s, and I've never had any issue with even the Gen 1s. So I couldn't really tell you one's better than the other, I could just tell you they both run flawlessly so far in this WK 180C Gen 2. So yeah, if you're looking for really awesome magazines, if you're looking to increase your, your rounds per magazine, Cross Industries Cross Mags are the way to go. Now while we're talking about AR-15 magazines, we ought to talk about the Mag Ripper. If you're looking to load a lot of AR-15 magazines at once, the Mag Ripper might be your friend. So you simply put a bunch of rounds in the Mag Ripper and you just stuff them into the magazines. And quite literally, you just stuff them in. Also in this video, we were using the Vector Optics Continental, the one to six by 24. If you're looking for a good quality LPVO, Vector Optics makes some pretty good quality stuff. 
It has a horseshoe type reticle that is illuminated with six settings. It has a super, super smooth magnification and the glass quality in this is actually quite nice. So if you're looking for something for your WK-180C Gen 2, I'd recommend taking a look at the Vector Continental 1-6 by 24. So this rifle has proved itself reliable, but can it prove itself as accurate? That is the question. So let's start with our least accurate. Federal American Eagle 55 grain full metal jacket boat tails. 6.45 MOA. Eek, pretty bad. Next, the Barnall full metal jacket. 5.2 MOA. The Tula Ammo 62 grain hollow points. 4.4 plus MOA. Why the plus? Because, well, you see there's only two hits on paper. There is a third one that is off paper, and I don't know how off it was. So it's 4.4 plus. Winchester 55 grain full metal jacket. 4.1 MOA. Hornady Frontier 55 grain full metal jacket M193s. 2.9. Now we're actually talking. So this is considered acceptable accuracy for a semi-automatic rifle chambered in 223. So this 2.9 MOA is actually considered to be quite respectable in terms of accuracy. BMC X-TAC M855 green tip 62 grained 2.2 MOA. So this is kind of where you're talking where you can actually start hitting your targets out to 350 meters at kind of best. So if you're coyote hunting, this type of accuracy is going to suffice, although you may need to test a few different ammunitions to find the one that it likes the most. Next, Nosler Varmageddon 55 grain FB tipped, 1.83. Hornady Black 62 grain full metal jacket, 1.73 MOA. PMC Bronze 55 grain full metal jacket boat tail, 1.6 MOA. Next, Sierra Match King, 69 grain hollow point boat tails, 1.56 MOA. So this is match ammunition. This is high quality, rather expensive ammunition. Barnes, 55 grain jacketed hollow point boat tails, 1.51 MOA. So you can kind of see the trend that the more expensive ammunition we put through this rifle, typically the better, better it performs. Although the PMC Bronze did quite respectively consider it's the cheapest ammunition of all that I've tested. Hornady Superformance Varmint, 53 grain VMAXs, 1.45 MOA. The Nosler Match Grade, 77 grain hollow point boat tail, 1.42 MOA. Seiko Gamehead, 55 grain, 1.1. I mean, why couldn't this have been one or below one? Then I could have said, you know, it's sub MOA. Well, actually, I did get three round group that was sub MOA. Unfortunately, I ruined that group. Hornady Varmint Express 55 grain VMAXs. My first three shots, 0.81 MOA. We would have had sub MOA performance. My third shot destroyed that, turned it to 2.78 MOA. Yeah. <laughs> I am very disappointed with this one. <laughs> I mean, the barrel was getting a little bit warmer, but still. It turned a 0.8 MOA into a 2.78 MOA. No. This rifle is considerably a very accurate rifle for a semi-automatic rifle. So, respectively, this is quite accurate and quite reliable. Next, let's talk about the barrel. So this barrel is a 18 and 3 quarter inch length. It has an A2 style flash hider and a mid-length gas system. It is an AR-15 barrel. So once I cook this barrel, which probably won't take me too much longer because I do a lot of rapid fire with this gun because it's just so much fun to do. I mean, how can you resist when you have one of these? Now the upper and lower are actually quite easy and quite simple to disassemble. So I'll just quite simply pop this pin here from this side. Uh, as you can see here, it has a captive takedown pin. And once you've pushed that out, you simply press this here. Sorry, it's right here. And you can now just remove your bolt carrier group, your springs and all that stuff, and give it a good cleaning. So this rifle has not and will not be cleaned until I have some real failure. So I kind of want to see just how far I can push it in terms of dirtiness uh, to see where its limits are. You know, is it going to start failing at 1,500, 2,000? Who really knows? And I kind of intend on finding out. But what I really like about it is it's so easy to take down. It has a captive takedown pin, so once you pop it out, you're not going to lose it. It just stays held in place right here. So I can pull on this as pretty much as much as I want, and it's not going to come out, which I really appreciate that kind of uh, having that on this rifle. Now, on the lower, we have an AR-15 mag release, which I'll just push this takedown pin in. will drop your magazines freely. 
the magazine well is flared, which makes inserting and well, obviously removing magazines very nice and easy. We have an AR-15 type safety selector. And on the opposite side, we have our non-reciprocating charging handle. So with the magazine inserting, it will lock open on the last round. The non-reciprocating charging handle is kept in place with a detent pin. Now what's neat about this is you have a bolt release. So you've just stuffed in a new magazine, you press this here, you press this right here, and it'll slam shut, chambering a new round. That's pretty darn awesome. What I've noticed in the beginning with the uh, bolt release is I'd say for the first 20 to 40 kind of releases, it was kind of stiff. It was pretty heavy on the release part of it. After that, it was really nice and smooth. Next, let's talk about the mil-spec trigger. So it has an AR-15 mil-spec trigger. You should expect this trigger to break anywhere between 5.5 pounds and seven pounds. This trigger for me broke between, well, generally at six pounds. It has some creep and it kind of varies by about uh, almost half a pound. So about a quarter pound up or a quarter pound down. So somewhere between six and a quarter or five and three quarters. But you can replace this trigger. So in terms of aftermarket support, there is a plethora of things you can do to this rifle to make it your own, to really customize it to what you want it to be, what you want it to look like. Starting with the trigger, you can replace this with almost any AR-15 type trigger. Almost, some of them don't fit apparently, but most do. You can replace the barrel with an AR-15 barrel. So once I finally cook this thing, I'm probably gonna put a match barrel into this thing and just see how much accuracy it can get out of a gas gun. The handguard is also an AR-15 handguard. Now you can replace it with any handguard provided it accepts your gas system. It takes AR-15 pistol grips, which actually looking at that pistol grip, this is not the pistol grip that came with it. It did come with a different version, which I mean, for my large hands, just wasn't really all that comfortable. So I replaced it with the Magpul rubberized grip, which is super comfortable. It also takes AR-15 buttstock. So this buttstock is obviously typically from an AR-15. It takes an AR-15 type buffer tube, AR-15 castle nut, obviously, and I don't recall what this part is called, but it's also AR-15 type part. But the upper and lower are not AR-15 uppers or lowers. So this is not an AR-15 variant. Oh, and lastly, our extractor on our bolt face is an AR-15 extractor as well. Lastly, let's talk about the warranty. So reloads will void your warranty. So will shooting and correct old corroded ammo or corrosive ammunition. It's for the original purchaser only. It's for one year only and proof of purchase is required. So that's the scoop on the warranty for these rifles. What's kind of neat is uh, kind of underneath this warranty, they have this little blurb that they wrote. I'll just read it to you. So while we do reserve the right to enforce the above policy to the letter, if something goes wrong with your rifle, please get a hold of us and let us know, even if it's outside the warranty period. If your story is good enough, we'll likely fix it regardless. <laughs> We work hard to ensure that our customers' rifles work well. If you make our warranty department laugh when you tell the story of what went wrong, we'll probably work even harder for you. Our employees have all dealt with warranty centers themselves at some point in their lives. They're not looking to make life difficult for you. So I feel like that's a kind of a really cool thing. So it kind of gives them the leeway to say, you know what, just send it in. We're gonna take care of it for you. So that's my take on the Kodiak Defense WK 180C Gen 2. This rifle is a blast to shoot. I, I have probably never had so much fun with my clothes on. This rifle was reliable, it was accurate, and if you're looking for a fun gun to have that is light, and that's actually not something I didn't even mention, this rifle is super light. You could pick this up, my girlfriend picked this up and was shooting this, and even she was like, wow, this, this is really not as heavy as I expected it to be. So anyway, if you're looking at picking up a awesome modern sporting rifle, definitely take a look at the Kodiak Defense 180C Gen 2. Pretty cool, but I need a fresh mag. WK 180C Gen 2.